Today is a big day. I'm introducing a new series of videos on the channel. First, we're going to do a brief recap of everything we've learned in the current series. And then I'm going to introduce you to what's next. Let's go. For the last five months, we've been going over the process of building environments procedurally. Let's take a look back at what we've done. While we're going through this, if you see something that you're really interested in that you missed, feel free to go back and watch it in that particular episode. We started out in episodes 15 and 16 by creating landscapes from real-world height data, including where to find high-resolution height data online and how to process it and get it into Unreal in a usable format. In episodes 17 and 18, we talked about creating an auto material for our landscape, beginning with simple slope blending and then getting more advanced with blending based on the landscape altitude and using material height blending. To finish off our auto material in episode 19, I showed how to apply hand painted materials on top of the auto material for areas that need manual touch ups. In episode 20 and 21, I showed how to automatically add grass, rocks, and trees to the landscape using Unreal's procedural grass system. This process has the potential to add a huge amount of performance cost to the scene, so I showed several techniques for reducing the density of the foliage to keep the cost under control while still making the landscape look realistic. Then in episode 22, we looked at a method for improving the performance of landscape rendering using runtime virtual textures. Landscape materials can be really expensive to render. One way to reduce the cost is to render them to an off-screen buffer called a virtual texture. The virtual texture only needs to be updated every so often when the player camera moves or rotates, so we save a lot of the rendering cost of the scene. In episode 23, I showed that we can also use the virtual texture for other things such as blending rocks and other objects with the landscape. We talked about the new Unreal Water System in episodes 24 through 28. In episode 24, I showed how to get the water system working and add it to your level. In episode 25, I showed how to customize and improve the look of the water. In episode 26, I showed an easy method for making objects float in the water. And then in episode 27 and 28, we talked about creating interactive ripples in the water and improving on the buoyancy. Next, we added puddles to our landscape material in episode 29. And then in episode 30, we added rain ripples to the puddles. We finished off the series talking about sky, atmosphere, and clouds in episodes 31 through 33 including how to use height fog, create light shafts, adding and tuning the volumetric clouds and customizing the volumetric cloud materials. What an amazing journey we've been on together for the last five months. We've learned so much and created a really cool looking procedurally generated world. Thanks a lot for coming along with me for supporting the channel and for all your great questions and suggestions in the comments. So, the question is, what now? What are we going to learn next? Well, we're going to take it back to the basics. I'm going to start a new series on creating materials and shaders, specifically focused on what each of the individual nodes in the graph do. So we'll be talking about the dot product node, the lerp node, the min, max, and clamp nodes, and even more complex nodes like vector transforms, cross products, and all the details behind texture sampling. For each of the nodes, I'll explain the math that it's doing and give several examples of how it can be used in a shader. I'll even discuss edge cases and some little tricks that you can use. But now, here's the big surprise. For our shader editors, 
We're going to be learning all of this in both Unreal Engine 5 as well as Unity. Yep, you heard that correctly. For the first time on my channel, I'm going to be teaching techniques in two game engines at the same time, Unity and Unreal. Why would I do this, you might ask? Well, I've seen a lot of people make the assumption that since a shader tutorial is created using only Unity or only Unreal, that it doesn't apply to any other engine and that the content is only valid for the specific engine it was made for. I want to show you that that's not true. By the end of my series of videos, I want you to be able to watch a video made for Unreal and to be able to make that same shader in Unity and vice versa. This series is going to teach you how to translate shaders. So if you've been looking for a way to really learn the details of using a shader graph to create all kinds of effects using shaders, you've come to the right place. This new series is going to be exactly what you're looking for, and you'll be able to use all of the principles that we go over in Unreal and Unity, and just about any other graph-based shader editor. And even better, if you know someone who's interested in this stuff, would you mind sharing my channel with them? I don't ask for donations, and I don't have a Patreon, but if you do want to support me, the best way to do it is to tell someone else about what I do. I really appreciate it. I've been making shaders of all kinds for almost 20 years, and I'm really excited to share what I know with you. So come back next week, and we'll get started. Thanks for watching.